there's been a little bit of a mishap. Her airline, um, Northwestern America Eurasia airline thing, wouldn't let her on the airplane because she's kind of dead. And apparently airplanes don't routinely let dead people on the airline, not even in the cargo. So that was sort of a downer. So I decided that I was going to go see her. She's in um, some very non-specific to religion anyway place over in Asia. It's sort of like an afterlife. But I had no way to get there. So I stole an army jeep. And that was a terrible decision on my part. And it just didn't work out. I tried to cross the ocean. But when I called the cops to get them to try to help me, the army came in and sort of took me me away, whisked me away, and just kind of stuck me in this holding cell, so to speak. It's very lonely in here. But luckily enough, Mary had time to send me a letter, so it just got information with her in it, with her biographical information, all that sort of stuff. The first thing she wanted, to me, wanted me to tell you was that she was born in 1863 in Connecticut. She was the eldest of five si siblings. In 1884, she graduated from Smith College with a sort of double major, so to speak, in classics and philosophy. She went to Europe for about a year, and when she returned, she got a job as a, as a Greek tutor at Wes Wellesley College, which I do believe is an all-girls school. Eventually, the main sort of guy, the department head of the philosophy section of that school, told her that she had commendable teaching, and he offered her a job in psychology as a teacher. And she was very enthused because that was a huge compliment since psychology was not only a budding field, but because she was a woman and women really didn't even have equal rights with men. But she, but first, to do the job, she had to take at least a year of psychology at a college. So she went back to college and she tried to, well, she tried to find a place that would accept her and that had psychology. And one of the only places that had that was Harvard. And she was sort of screwed because since she was a woman, they wouldn't let her in. Her teacher and her dad, her father, both had to write letters to Harvard. And then Harvard was like, well, all right, you can sit in this, on this class, but you're not a student. So she, she sort of just kept her mouth shut and just did it. But the first day of class, when she got there, there was no one else in the class. All the, all the men, except for the two professors, had vacated in protest of her, a woman, receiving teaching, equal teaching, at the same time they did. So she, she got her own time, like she got William James for, on her own time, which was pretty amazing. He was a great guy, but apparently he was kind of loony, but most great people are, like Einstein. And then um, eventually she sort of graduated Harvard, and she would have gotten a PhD, which is really good, and she was at the top of her class, but Harvard wouldn't let her have it because she was a woman, of course. They tried to offer her one from another college, not even a PhD, just some, some other degree of some sort, from another college, but she wouldn't accept it. Eventually, she just sort of started to do her own thing, and she invented the theory of paired association. Not too long after she invented it, though, Titchener stole it from her, sort of, and he claimed it was his own. And she had to keep quiet about it because she was a woman, and in a court of law, no one would have believed her. And she just sort of sucked it up and got over it, but she did tell me she still wants to beat him in the face for it, which I can understand. She went on to write over a hundred papers and four books, one of which was like made in four different editions at least. And she came up with the theory of self psychology, which has to do with space and space and time consciousness, emotions and dreaming, and all that sort of stuff. And the, ma the main focus of the theory was that both the conscious and the subconscious form forms are, are different forms of the self, so to speak, and both impact thoughts and behaviors. But the sad thing is, is that while this sort of did give credence to things like um, psychoanalysis, like psychoanalytic theory, and all those sort sorts of things that were like brand new, brand stinking new at the time, she sort of got swept under the rug and aside from all of her problems that were caused by her pretty much being a woman, she isn't very well known anymore. The main focus of her story, or of, of her letter to me, was to make sure to tell you, the audience, that as women, we 
sure to be happy for what you have because back in her time, women didn't have anything that you had. And um, she also told me that if I ever come over to visit her in the sort of afterlife land that's very not specific or very unspecific, she told me to bring a machete because she told me that Freud, Sigmund Freud, every time he sees her, would sort of pelvis thrust in her general, general direction and tell her that she has penis envy. She wants to make him the next Uranus, if you know what I mean. If I get out of this holding cell, I'll see you tomorrow on the next edition of Interview with Corpse.